leaves and crowned by capitals. Between the columns, high up the walls, there is like windows with wooden blinds open to the view. Look carefully. They are not real windows, but paintings of windows hung on the walls. In all his building projects, Herod avoided images of animals or people in obedience to the biblical prohibition. But here, in this room, Herod made an exception to that custom. He gave orders to paint views of Egypt and the Nile, selected especially for the guest. After all, the conquest of Egypt by the Emperor's army under Agrippa's command symbolizes the unity of the Empire. Look, goats on a rocky cliff, a cypress tree and a shrine. And here, a crocodile slides into the Nile. And in this picture, a bull under a big tree in a pasture. And in the background, a boat at sea. And the colors are so vibrant and natural. Paintings like this were rare, even in Rome. <laughs> For my workers, finishing the work before the visit seemed an impossible task. Uh, but Herod never accepted impossible as an option. Marcus Agrippa, the Emperor's second in command, has entered the harbor of Caesarea. The city was festively decorated, the crowds came out to greet the illustrious guest, and here began the journey that Herod had planned for Agrippa, into the heart of Judea, to the edge of the desert, to Herodium. As the visit progressed, Agrippa was more and more amazed. He did not expect to find such splendor and grandeur at the remote edge of the empire. He smiled with pleasure when he identified the wine from a famous Italian vineyard as his own favorite back home. But Herod had one more surprise for Agrippa, the high point of all his gestures of esteem. Herod led him to the second floor of the royal guest hall. Agrippa was deeply moved as he stood in front of a painting of a naval battle. He recognized it at once. The Battle of Actium, his greatest triumph, where he defeated Mark Antony and Cleopatra, handing Egypt to the Emperor Augustus on a silver platter. The depiction was so vivid that Agrippa's memories came flooding back, and for a brief moment, he felt the painting was cut to my heart. Oh, King Herod, he knew how to please those he needed to, but also to arouse fear. This cruel man was enormously talented, a lion and a fox in one. His reign was remarkable. The kingdom flourished, trade prospered, people lived well. Despite the venomous criticism aimed at him, I always thought we should not forget the greatness of the man who changed Judea more than all his predecessors. But years go by, and the king feels his end is near, and the show will not go on forever. So he has brought us here, again, to this very room, but this time to demolish it to cover it with earth and turn the entire mountain into the eternal mausoleum of Herod, king of Judea. The royal hall has now become the sleeping quarters of the demolition crew. In the last days of the theater, everyone tries to leave his mark on these walls. One edges a maze or a rosette, another draws a boat with a piece of charcoal. I, too, feel that my end is near. This will apparently be my last assignment. But before I leave this world, I would like to learn one thing. Is it true that everything is destined to disappear with time? In 2,000 years from now, will anyone still know who Herod, King of Judea, was? <laughs> who knows? Perhaps somewhere. Far into the unforeseeable future, this theater will again be full of people and the sounds of talk and music. <laughs> Who knows?
sinunog sinunog ba? Teka na, last na. Ay, ito talaga. Sabi ko, mayroon ka. Part dito, Arab. Yung doon, hindi. Kasi pag ganyan ang bubong, Israeli. Pagka walang ganong bubong, Arab. لا 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 اسمعيني وبعدين والله لا 
Ang cute. May Gina ang cute, oh. Ba't nung ang tigil? Ang tigil.